Here. So thank you everybody for coming out. We don't have mics today, so hopefully my voice is loud enough. Um, I've never had somebody tell me I'm too quiet, so <laughs> I'm guessing you can all hear me okay. Uh, we're really excited today to have BadgerBox and have Spencer presenting uh, um, here with us. And we are thankful for the coffee from Crescendo. We have 100 State as our sponsor. They are sponsoring us for, I believe, the rest of 2016, or at least a six-month sponsorship. So we're really grateful for their participation and support of the One Million Cups program. Um, don't forget that Leah has up there some different things that you can do to interact with the presenter and the audience. So feel free to tag things, 1MC Mad, and to tweet. We love getting some action going on our Twitter feed. And I want to send a reminder out that there is the entrepreneurship conference coming up in June that's hosted by the Wisconsin Technology Council. So if you're interested in attending that or being a part of it, please um, check our newsletter. We'll have some updates. And you can always reach out to anybody on our team and we can make sure that we get you in contact with the right people. Um, so without further ado, and we're going to start doing introductions. Also, quick thanks to Derek and Field59 for doing the live stream. It's been awesome. We know we've had people tuning in. So remember, if you can't make it, you can always um, click on our website or through our newsletter and be able to tune in to any of the presenters. Obviously, the library for donating this space. And I'm Rachel Neal. I'm with One Million Cups, and I'm also with Nordic Consulting. And since we don't have a mic, I'm going <laughs> to pass it along to you. Hi, I'm also Rachel, Rachel Karanen. I'm a writer. I do a lot of content marketing and marketing strategy for tech companies in Madison and across the country. Um, I'm also working on a series of books for an academic publishing company. So right now I'm writing about the history of computer science in relation to art. I'm uh, very excited to hear about BadgerBox. I love food, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex Ryan with uh, Sun Power Corp in the solar space, looking to get back into startups. Juan Gomez with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Joey Frain, Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. I'm Ed with the library. I'm uh, Veronica Lisa Krugner Higby, Comfort Care for Animals, LLC. I'm Tom Willis, I'm a technology consultant. Flora Chantos, Program Coordinator at the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Joanna Cervantes, Senior Regional Director with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Wisconsin. Spencer Fricky, a UW student here. Steve Claude, uh, co-founder of 32 Auctions. Kurt Peterson, the other co-founder of 32 Auctions, <coughs> platform for hosting and managing silent auctions. I'm Drew Corson with The Million Cups and uh, Nader Boucher. I'm an attorney and I specialize in uh, startup work and security as well. And I'm Leah Anderson. I'm another organizer of One Million Cups Madison and I work for Nordic. So now we're going to turn things over to you. Cool. Um, the format, I think everyone's familiar with it, but I'll just give a, a quick recap. We'll have Spencer present for the next 10 to 15 minutes, then we'll turn everything over to the audience. Please make sure you ask questions, poke holes. Um, don't give him too hard of a time, but I think he looks like a guy that could handle it if he did. And then um, you'll have some chance to do some one-on-one -on -one conversations with him after the presentation um, ends. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Enjoy. All right, thank you guys for having me. Uh, my name is Spencer. I'm the owner and founder of BadgerBox. Um, so guys, give you a what? Um, I don't know, who reached out to me on Twitter? Who handles your social media account? That was me. You do? All right. <laughs> thank, thanks for reaching out to me because I don't think that I would have heard of anything like this if you guys didn't reach out to me. Yeah. Um, so I love being around entrepreneurs and people that are new with startups and stuff like that. So it's a really cool atmosphere to be a part of, so I just am honored to be here and, and to be able to speak. Um, to give you a little bit of background on who I am, um, uh, I'm 27, live in Pewaukee, I have a three-year-old, and uh, I've been obsessed with entrepreneurship since my senior year of high school. Um, my entire high school career, I did not read a single book. Um, I hated, I hated class. Uh, I did, always did the Cliff Notes version of every single book that I read if I had to do a book report. Um, but it was my second semester of my senior year, I took an economics class and I had to read a book on business. And that was the first time I actually ever read a book from front to back. And it was a book by, uh, by Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad Poor Dad. And uh, I read it in two days and I'm like, 
I love business, I love entrepreneurship. It seemed super applicable to what I was doing and just like the real world. So I fell in love with it since that point and just like been obsessed with being around entrepreneurs and, and you know, and going down that route. And so here I am with Badgerbox. Um, I started Badgerbox about four months ago. Um, had the idea, um, I'm, I was paying attention really close to the subscription box business model and that trend that's been booming. I was talking to you before about, you were talking about Birchbox and stuff like that. They kind of pioneered the way for the subscription box uh, industry. So um, basically what Badgerbox is, is right there on the front, it's kind of my tagline, is Badgerbox handpicks four to six items each month from around <coughs> Wisconsin and delivers them to your door. So I mean, that's a really simple version of, of what we do. We're a subscription box and we handpick different items from all over the state and then we ship them out to people who would be subscribed to the box. I ideally created it for, um, essentially for my siblings. Um, I've got three siblings. I'm the only one of my siblings that stayed back here in Wisconsin. They all live on the East Coast. I got two in DC and one's in New York City right now. And I've been doing my own version of that for the last five years, right? So every time I go out to visit them, they're always asking me if I can bring products from Wisconsin to them. And for a long time, I just kind of thought that, you know, that they were weird, that, you know, I didn't know that anybody else did anything like that until the first time I went to a Packer bar and I realized that they're not weird, that there's, it's a whole culture of people that, you know, when you grow up in Wisconsin, you just, you're kind of used to it. You take it for granted, essentially. But then when you move away, you start to realize like all these different people that fill these bars and there's just a strong sense of community and strong sense of Wisconsin pride that people want to get products from Wisconsin um, to them. So I created it for the people that grew up in Wisconsin and then moved away. But there's also the, the other aspect to it where there's people that live in the state of Wisconsin that also want to support businesses locally and feel good about where their money is going to, right? There's that, that trend of shopping local and everything like that that's really taken place. So um, I just got the website finished. So I'm going to kind of use you guys as get the feedback on, on how you guys like the website and everything like that. So I'm just going to kind of go through everything that's on here. Um, so I've already talked about what's uh, basically how it works. Um, so now like the stuff that you can find in the box, things that you can expect every single month. Um, so the different items will be food and snack products. So um, that's a big one. I know a lot of people that um, whenever they think about Wisconsin, they always think about meat and cheese products. So right now, um, everything has to be, uh, uh, I can't have anything that has to stay refrigerated, shipped in the box, but I am finding a way um, in the future where I'm going to be able to ship products that, you know, can uh, cheese and meats and stuff like that, that uh, can be, that have to be refrigerated, that I'll be able to ship as well. So different food and snack products. And I've got uh, stuff over there as well. If you guys want to, after the presentation's over, if you want to look at some of the different items, those are just different samples that people have sent to me. Um, different types of items like that will be in the box. So Wisconsin branded products like, uh, have you guys heard of Drink Wisconsin Blee? Yeah, so them, um, they, they're gonna be sending me products for the box next month. Different stuff like that. Like I wanna find like, uh, there's a company called Rep Wisconsin, uh, Drink Wisconsin Blee, and just like cool different um, Wisconsin brands that I wanna be a part of the box um, just to kind of show off some Wisconsin pride. Uh, personal care and home products, different <coughs> soaps, Things that you maybe find at like a farmer's market, those type of items. So um, uh, farmer's markets are going to be huge for me moving forward. I'm going to stop at every single farmer's market that I possibly can throughout the entire summer um, and just try to network with different businesses and try to get the name out there. So those are the different products that you can find in the box. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you guys add me, Badger Bucks Co. And then... Um, so that's basically like the front page of the website. Um, so I kind of already went through on this on like who, who Badgerbox is for and everything like that. So um, if you're a Wisconsin, you grew up in Wisconsin, you move away, basically that's, that's who Badgerbox is for. So it's a really simple version of the website, but I wanted to keep it simple so people know exactly how to use it. Um, so. Now that that's done, um, all right. 
So now I was talking before kind of about um, on the Badger, I think the reason why Badger Box will be successful is kind of in the middle of two trends, right? It's in the middle of the shopping local trend and it's also in the middle of the subscription box business model. Both are, are booming right now and I'm kind of like perfect blend in between. So some of the simple stats on, on shopping local that if you spend $100 at a local business, roughly $68 stays in your local economy. And if you spend the same on a large business, only 43 stays in the local economy. So by the businesses that are being a part of BadgerBox, um, I, I mean, it's obviously starting off small right now because I haven't even, the website's still in test mode um, and I plan on launching it in the next few days. But in the future, like when it gets to a couple hundred boxes, I'd love to be able to go up to these businesses and purchase you know, 200 products from them and just be able to support them. Because the market that, that they want to be a part of or that they're trying to target, I believe is, is exactly who are the people that would be purchasing BadgerBox. It's a hyper-personalized market share that they're being a part of by getting their products into the box. And then they're also building brand trust by being a part of the box and having it sent to their household as well. So, so we're supporting local businesses by actually purchasing the products from them, marketing their business for them, and getting their products actually into the hands of people who would be um, um, most qualified to, to purchase something from them. So small businesses donate 250% more than large businesses to nonprofits in the community, and that small local businesses are the largest employers nationally. So just some cool stats for people that um, you think about shopping locally versus a shopping at a big box store. So, um, so how we support local businesses is we, uh, like I said before, we're a direct channel to a hyper-personalized market for the businesses that decide to participate. Um, we only purchase products from businesses to support them, but we encourage our customers to visit their sites and make purchases by providing coupon incentives in the box. So we're not gonna be storing actually products on the site. So what we're gonna do is they're gonna be part of the subscription box where they're gonna send different items. We'll have coupons in the box and they can actually go back to the other, you know, if they have an e-commerce store set up, they can actually go back to visit their store and make products directly through them so they get to uh, also keep the customer. We're not just kind of hoarding everything for ourselves. Um, so we build brand trust by having them in the box. And we also only support businesses whose products are manufactured and produced here in Wisconsin. Minus the branded products, right? Because if it's a t-shirt, you know, a lot of it's made in China and stuff like that. So we can't always have everything that way. But um, there's a company that I was talking to and only two of their products are actually manufactured and produced here in Wisconsin. The rest of it is manufactured and produced um, in other parts of the state or other parts of the country. And so the only products that we'd actually have in Badger Box are the only ones that are actually manufactured and produced here just to make sure that, you know, that is actually authentic quality uh, Wisconsin products that are making its way into the box. So um, why Badger Box will succeed? So shopping local is a growing trend among all Americans, but especially among millennials. So 37% of millennials claim to distrust big business. And this is where social media and its ability to highlight authenticity comes into play for the connected generation, um, Forbes. So millennials, obviously we grew up with the internet and so we have this sense of community and everything like that. And so we find that if, if people are authentic on social media and we, we find to trust their business more, um, by them being more authentic with us and we haven't you know we're distrusting big box businesses as we keep moving forward and so and the reason why Millennials are important is because right now they make up a third of the entire population and they spend nearly 600 billion dollars a year on consumer products so um, Millennials are obviously um, are a huge uh, target population for us moving forward um, and and then not only that but Millennials are used to the different technologies. You know, we might not get everybody that's used to purchasing subscription boxes, but millennials are kind of growing up with that, so that's definitely a target market for us. Um, so, and then I kind of learned about these guys as I started getting this created, but I didn't know that this existed prior to it. So, there's already people that are already doing it. 
So I think when you start a business, I think it's important to go into something that's already, you know, has some market share and that you can already get into it. So there's the something special from Wisconsin. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. So there's already things that pre that existed before I started. So people are already, are already really excited to get things that are something special from Wisconsin. They're already interested in Wisconsin products. And this Wisconsin made, um, it's wisconsinmade.com. They do all different types of like meat and cheese and different types of branded products. And I believe that they're like, they're a couple million dollar business. And so just knowing that they exist um, is important because my business model is, is different from them. It's not just like they, people can't just go shop and pick out whatever they want. It's different products that are gonna come into the box each and every month. Um, and people are not gonna know exactly what they're gonna get. It's kind of that Amazon effect, right? How many of you guys shop on Amazon? Everybody. How many of you guys are excited when you get that box at your doorstep? If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. Because <laughs> everybody's excited when you get a box at your door and you get to open it. It's, it's, it's cool, it's a psychological effect. So when you get the Badger box shipped to your house, there's a psychological effect of you not you don't exactly know what you're going to get in the box, but it's you know and so um, that's why I just think uh, subscription boxes are massively popular um, right now. It's because of that. So um, so the monthly um, the monthly subscription box is all about bringing back the element of discovery and surprise, but more importantly, it does so by allowing consumers to sample products in small batches preventing them from experiencing sensory overload. So the most popular subscription box categories right now are fashion, cosmetics, organic food, eco-friendly products, kids and crafts activities. And then some of the different subscription commerce investments that recently took place, Just Fab, um, they got a $109 million investment from a venture capital firm, uh, Beach Mint, 73 million, Honest Company, 27 million, and so on, and then Birchbox, 11.9 million. They're kind of the ones that kind of started everything. So, it's it's definitely a growing trend, and uh, and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. I was reading something last night, and they were saying that there's a 200% growth rate year after year on subscription boxes. That there's a there's a website called My Subscription Addiction, and it's a uh, it's crazy. Like it's it's real, <laughs> it's real, and so. Um, this lady has, she's kind of an affiliate for different subscription boxes, and she gets four to five new subscription box um, requests a day to have on her site. That's how popular it is right now. So, um, so yeah, so like what I was talking about before, basically Badger Box is just the perfect blend between the two. It's the perfect blend of shopping local, supporting cool local um, businesses here in Wisconsin, and it's also taking advantage of the growing subscription box trend. Um, so that's basically what I got. And if you guys have any questions, I'd love to be able to answer them for you. Yes? Um, so how much does it cost? Yeah, so that's here. I can actually go to that for you. So right now, um, the way that I have it set up is the month-to-month -month program is $40 a month, and then it's $5.95 shipping. Um, and then if you do a three-month prepay, it's $35 a month. Six-month prepay is $30 a month. Oh, the other uh, comment, have you thought about the, uh, uh, the audience, targeting your audience to a business-to-business? -business? Um, in my experience with uh, dealing with people that have previously lived in Wisconsin and yeah. they live, say, in California, they tend to cluster into different bars, different establishments sure so maybe delivering the product to the business so they can just yeah uh, showcase it to the yeah yeah all the frequent those yeah good that's a good point um, like I said I have uh, my siblings live in DC and in New York City and my brother's good friends with the owner of the Packer bar in DC and then my sister's good friends with the owner of the Packer bar in New York City of one of them at least and so what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually gonna, they're gonna talk to them, and what I'm gonna do is once that season kind of kicks off, I'm gonna send them boxes, um, like a month supply that they can use for like raffling off things. I'm also gonna send like the different bartenders uh, t-shirts um, like this, and then with a Badger box on the back, just to kind of like get, cause that's, that's my target market right there. People who, you know, lived here, and so if you're going to a Packer bar, 
in DC, chances are you grew up in Wisconsin and that's the reason why you're there or you're bringing your spouse or something like that there. Um, so yeah, so if I can get my products there and they can showcase it for me and give it away, uh, that, that's perfect. So that's exactly what I plan on doing. Yeah. Um, a couple questions. One, um, have you looked at any data if it's available about what the life cycle of your average subscriber to a box service is? Like I can't imagine people yeah. stick with any service for more than some discrete amount of time. Sure. I don't know the answer to that, um, but I, I think I've heard from from other places that you know that 60% of people will subscribe just for the first month and then they fall off. And then um, you know, unlike like Birchbox, you know, which mm -hmm. has you know, a whole ubiquity of cosmetic and skincare products and whatever, sure, um, and a reach beyond Wisconsin. How do you avoid becoming like a hyper niche market with a limited product offering? Yeah, yeah, that's another really good question. Um, I, I think that when I when I picked what I wanted to do, I wanted to be niched that that much, um, just because like there are certain products that I can have in the box that I can that if somebody got the same product, you know, the third month or something, they're not going to be mad. You know, like if you got meat from a different meat company you're not gonna be upset that you got summer sausage in your box. You know what I mean? Like, you just won't. Like, they're consumable products. So, I mean, a lot of these, when I, when I was thinking about the end user, um, these are people that, you know, can't necessarily get these products in other parts of the country. So, you know, if I can ship them different meats and cheeses and stuff like that, and I can have, like, um, and also create that emotional connection, too. Because when you're sending them a box, and it reminds them of home, there's an emotional connection that they take to that. And so that's why I don't think that people are going to be as concerned about the different products that they find in the box. And also I think that that's hopefully going to also increase uh, people from not falling off um, for the subscription. Yeah. So compared to some other subscription boxes that I'm familiar with, sure. the price seems a little bit on the higher side. Yes. Um, and I'm curious, like, what is the value of the items in the box? Is it, are you able to tell people that you're spending $40, but you're getting $80 worth of sure. product? Or is that, like, pretty accurately what the box represents? And yes. then as you build your subscription base, do you think that you'll be able to lower the cost? Yeah. Um, so right now, if it's a $40 a month to month, what that is is you're gonna get $40 worth of products in the box. And the value that I'm bringing is that you don't have to look all over the internet to try to find different different items to, to get. So you're getting random items from Wisconsin and it's gonna for sure equal 40 bucks. So if you prepay, you know, you get a little bit of a price break that way. Moving forward in the future, um, the reason why I had to do it this way is because um, starting out, I have to actually purchase the products from these vendors. They're not, I get some people that have sample, like sample size products that I could put in there, um, but that's the only reason, that's the only way that these companies can actually get the price that low, is that they're having sample size products that people are actually sending to them for free. Because if, I mean, if I had four to six items that I could put in the box and they were all sample size products, I could charge $20, $15 for it, because it's pure profit at that point, but when I actually have to purchase the product, you know, if I have a $16 item in there, I'm wholesale. I'm buying it wholesale at $8. So it's costing me the money, and then I also have to pay to ship it, and then I also have to pay for the box. So starting out, it's going to be a little bit high, but I think as I move forward and I establish myself as a business, I can negotiate lower rates with them to try to, if I'm purchasing like full-size products, I can get it to them at their cost. So because then I'm adding that extra value of actually sending their products to people that can hopefully come back and repurchase from their website. Um, so yeah, so that's the reason why it's it's high right now, but I do plan on uh, lowering it in the future. What about uh, uh, gifting? I mean, is it set up, if I want to, I've got, I've got lots of friends who live around the country. Sure. Have a lot of Wisconsin local ties. I yeah. just want to send them a one-off box. Yes. Are you set up for that? Is that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I mean, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Like when you think of a subscription, I mean, you could subscribe, like you can click on subscribe and then you could fill out their details and then just send them a box and then you could cancel it afterwards. So 
But I mean, yeah, it is it is set up so like. So you can click on subscribe or give a gift. So you just click on give a gift. It what it'll do is it'll basically take you to you know the page where you can go through. You could click on month to month. And then what it'll do is you can go through and you can just pop in all of their shipping information and then you can put in your billing information and then just send them the box and then and then you just cancel it right away after that. Yeah. So I know thank you for your presentation today. I noticed on on the previous web page, uh, you said that shipping was only allowed within the USA. Correct. So I have I have family and friends who are in the military. Okay. And I'm always sending them care packages. Is that something that you your business would be open to shipping? And they yeah, I, I stuck with just the United States for right now just because I want to keep it as, as simple as possible. There's been a ton of different things that have gone into the business that, you know, that I'm just, that's another thing that I have to worry about, right? Customs and all that kind of stuff. And I just didn't want to have to deal with that right away. But I think in the near future, I'll open it up. I also kept it in the United States because of fraud. I talked to different subscription box owners that you know that they said that they were getting um, purchases from Mexico and stuff like that, and um, in other parts of, of the world, and they were uh, and they were just fraudulent purchases, and that was just something that I didn't I didn't want to deal with starting out so soon because it's small things like that that can drain your capital really quickly, and I, I just didn't want that to happen. So, but in the future, I I will um, open it up, and especially with the military. I mean, I think that that'd be huge. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. Sorry, and second question. So many of us, we're <coughs> professionals in different various sides. How sure. can we help you in your business? Uh, do you need access to capital? Do you need help with your marketing? How can we help? Yeah, I mean, those are, um, I mean, access access to capital is always, always important just to make sure that, um, you know, different roadblocks that happen if you're really limited early on and if you're, you know, don't have that capital to overcome, you know, a small little hurdle or something like that, it can put you out of business. So, I mean, that's definitely something that I'm interested in. And I mean, as far as like marketing and everything like that, really the, the thing that I'd be most interested in is if somebody has graphic design experience. That's something that I am terrible at. And, uh, and I just don't even want to bother with. And so if, if somebody had, you know, graphic design experience, but I, I do social media marketing on the side, so I'm definitely well equipped with uh, running Facebook advertisements and Instagram and doing all that kind of stuff and knowing which platforms to be on. Um, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, capital and, uh, and graphic design would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes? I am curious to know, based on your experiences talking with other people who are in subscription box services, mm -hmm. what's the biggest challenge you anticipate for your business and how are you working to avoid or overcome it? Yeah, good question. Uh, I think the the biggest thing is uh, what he was mentioning before, as far as people just like falling off so soon. You know, they purchase it and then they just they don't repurchase from you. I mean, the whole subscription box is does, is the business. The reason why the business model is um, why it's you know it's I think it's appealing is because you get repeat business from people for a, hopefully a long period of time. So I think the big thing is just yeah is getting those people that fall off so soon, or the cost of acquiring a customer. If your cost to acquire a customer is really high, then it's, it's going to be really hard to move forward. So what will you do? I mean, because I've definitely read about that in the New York Times, that subscription box services struggle to get those repeat customers who yeah. subscribe in the long run. Yes. So, I mean, it's never fun to always be working that hard for the, for the win. So sure. how will you do that? Yeah, so I mean, Kind of touched on it a little bit before. I'm. I won't know this until, you know, maybe a couple months in, because I'm actually going to be shipping out the first shipment tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So once I kind of, you know, figure everything out, I'll have a little bit better idea. But I'm hoping because this is something that people would subscribe to because they grew up in Wisconsin. That it, there's some type of emotional connection to the actual to the purchase that they're making and the box that they're getting. So. With that, I'm hoping that they don't fall off so soon. But once I keep, once I run it a little bit longer, I can see the numbers, and I'll hopefully get back to you on that. Yeah. What's your current margin on boxes, and what's your ideal margin? Yeah. So um, I would ideally like to be um, at around 
fifty percent, sixty percent margins. So um, right now, everything that goes into the box, everything's going to be kind of high. I'm not planning on making any profit um, for probably at least the first couple of months, just because I think that's just the nature of it. Um, so right now, everything that that's in the box, if it's forty dollars, I've spent twenty dollars or more on just the products in the box, and then to actually get the box. I didn't want to cheap out. Like I could have bought like a, a pre-cut box and then put like a sticker on it, but I didn't want to do that because I thought it felt cheap. Um, and so the boxes are kind of expensive actually. Um, boxes are running me about three dollars and forty-seven cents so per box. Yeah, box. for sure. Um, so the boxes are expensive, and then um, so everything like that. So I'm at least twenty-five dollars in. Yeah. So this is. This is what the box is, um, and so I wanted I wanted it to be printed on and everything like that, and I just wanted it to look good and professional. Um, so I didn't mind taking that hit moving forward, just because if somebody gets something and it looks cheap, you know maybe they don't want to order it again. So I'd be willing to lose out on a couple extra bucks if if it looks more presentable. So right now I'm spending about twenty five bucks, and you know if somebody's ordering it for thirty, my margins are extremely low. Yeah. You mentioned before that right now you're uh, purchasing all the items that go into the box. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a question that uh, goes across all subscription box box companies, but how do you balance supply and demand? Like if you get another customer, do you run out and buy more stuff, or do you have a room in your house filled with yeah. meats and cheeses and t-shirts yeah. and mugs? Yeah, so the, the way that the, the billing cycle is set up is that I'm going to ship out on the 10th. And so what I'll do is I'll order the product on the first of the month, so I'll kind of give the vendors at least a 10-day window. And so when the site is live, what I do is I kind of just project for those next, you know, 10 days, however many customers I think I'm going to get. And so, like, you know, if I have 30 new people that signed up and I'm getting, you know, I don't know, a one person per day or something like that, then I can expect for those next 10 days that one person's going to sign up every single day for the next 10 days. So then I would order you know, 40 boxes or whatever. So that's that's essentially how I do it. And then as soon as I run out, a little pop-up thing comes on the on the computer, on the website, saying that I'm out of inventory, but they can still get the next, the following month. Okay. So, so that's have, the way that I do it. So you have like a really busy time of the month when you're yeah. getting all the stuff in, you're opening it, yes. packing up the boxes, sending them out. Yeah, so I'm like the you're first the through the 10th is kind of, is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So like yesterday I had to drive to Oshkosh. After this, I got to go drive to a place in Madison, and then after that, I got to go drive to a place in Elkhorn. It's just like it's crazy for right now, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So yeah, yes. I saw the you have four different social media icons on your box. Yeah. The one that I don't understand how you're leveraging is Snapchat. What Snapchat. You, what yeah. are you doing? What? How's that work out for you for? Yeah. Advertising a product. Sure. So I haven't. Um, that hasn't been something that I've tapped into completely yet, but the reason why I have it is because as I start getting you know, different things, I can do kind of behind the scenes of, of what's going on. Uh, Snapchat's incredibly popular with millennials. Mm -hmm. That's a market that I don't want to ignore at all. And so I had to be a part of Snapchat because I can show tons of behind the scenes things that are going on. When I'm going to farmer's markets, I can kind of do different stories on different businesses that I'm meeting. I can just do quick little things because with Snapchat, somebody's clicking on BadgerBox and because they want to actually watch what's going on. So I have 100% of their attention for however long they're deciding to watch the video. So that's the, why, that's the reason why I think Snapchat is popular is because millennials are using it and that if somebody's actually clicking to watch what's going on, I'm capturing 100% of their attention rather than Facebook, you know, they might be just scrolling through real quick and I've got like, you know, a tenth of a second of their attention span and then they're on to the next thing. So that's how I plan on using it. It's just kind of showing behind the behind the scenes of what's going on, and just like different aspects of the business that you wouldn't be able to see on Instagram or Facebook and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Just quick, um, can I see the, the logo part? I can see that. Oh yeah, if you want to hold it. No, like, no, no. Just quick, why didn't you do the, um, the QR code on the Snapchat logo? What's up? Like you know, Snapchat has a little QR code. Yeah. Why not just have it in the box? I can just like. Right in the box right there. Where were you like three months ago, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's a yeah, that's a really good point. I mean that's 
Luckily, I only purchased 125 boxes. Yeah, I mean, so. That's what I'm saying, because then it's right there, and then you kind of instinctively go, oh, I can just add them right now. Yeah, yeah, that's Spencer. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and a great name. Yeah, that's and a great name. name. Yeah, great idea, great name. You? What, what's the, uh, you talked about kind of trying to tap into these Wisconsin-centric kind of either locations or bars. or So what is kind of the focus of lead and customer acquisition at this point? Can you repeat that again? Where are you concentrating your efforts for customer acquisition at this point? Um, right now, um, everything's basically being done through Instagram okay. and through Facebook paid advertising. Um, so I think that Facebook paid advertising is too strong of a platform to ignore. And I was talking to him before about it. You can narrow it down so much and target it. And so I've gotten actually pretty good feedback um, resp like click through rate on a lot of the different ads that I was running on Facebook but moving forward um, I think uh, influencer marketing is, is really popular right now so if I can get different uh, influencers and, and find different influencers who their target market would be people that you know that I would be interested in I'll send them boxes to hopefully get them to review it I've got some local different mom blogs um, that have a pretty strong social media following um, and they're, you know, obviously they're pretty strong influencers in their market. So I'll send them the, I'll send them boxes to, um, to review the products. And then moving forward, um, I plan on sending them to. Uh, there's a website called Packers Fans Everywhere or something like that, where it shows all of the different Packer bars in the country. So what I plan on doing is just cold calling all of these different Packer bars, because those are my ideal customers, and seeing if I can send them boxes that they can give off as raffles and stuff like that. I would also maybe recommend using um, the Alumni Association here. So okay. I know they have a directory of yeah. every major Badger bar in all the major metro metropolitan areas. Awesome. And I lived in Chicago for 10 years. There's a line to get into the Packer and Badger bar. Is it really? For the game, yeah. And it's, it's packed every weekend. So yeah. that might be a good way to kind of source those specific bars and then okay. target from them. So yeah, the afterwards maybe people. if you can. Yeah. Yeah, afterwards, if you want to maybe sure. just give me that resource or sure. something, that'd be awesome. Appreciate sure. that. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, I just really want to underscore the transplant market. I've met, I'm new here from California. I've met a bunch of people who are not from Wisconsin. I've met more non Wisconsin people here than I've met Wisconsin based <laughs> okay. in Madison. Yeah. And I'm going back to California this weekend. And just last night, I walked State Street to like pick up. Madison and Wisconsin cool. themed gifts. Okay. I wish I had known about this product. <laughs> it made my life a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, and I'm taking it, you know, I'm flying back with the knickknacks I picked up and sure. distributing it to five or six different households. Okay. And so if there was this option to, yeah, to send a box, mm -hmm. the box looks way nicer than the plastic bag I'm bringing home. <laughs> like, yeah. I, think, I think really tapping into the transplant market is something that could go a long way. That's a good and maybe having a plan, sure. like not a monthly thing. I'm I'm personally detracted from that. Like a month goes really quickly and things build up. Yes. I had a tea box subscription and now I'm just drowning in tea and like don't I <laughs> just one month was too fast. Yes. So if you had like different plans, like an every other month plan or once a quarter box, sure. If I got to check out and saw that, I would be more likely to click on that than to do a monthly subscription. Gotcha. Personally. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, I know it might be too much legwork for somebody because I know everybody wants it to just be super simple and they want it to be tailored to their specific need exactly how they want it. But I think I think the best way to do that is to still run it on a month-to-month -month basis, but you can freeze your account. Sure. So what you can do is you can do the month and then freeze it for the next two and then you can open it back up whenever you want to start getting boxes again. Yeah. I don't know if that would help or anything like that but I would I would I, I understand exactly what you're coming where you're coming from yeah and as a starting out entrepreneur I would encourage you to do what you just told her to do okay yeah. she's not gonna do that she's telling you she's not gonna be a customer unless you can can provide her something that's quarterly sure so why don't you just do that behind the scenes and say fine I, I can flash up there you choose check a box this quarterly yeah you go and freeze the account for sure. two months and then start it up and then yeah. freeze it yeah 
And then same with when you click okay. send a gift, yeah. going to a page that says subscribe and then telling me to cancel the account. Okay. Not going to happen. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, just simple little branding that it doesn't matter what you're doing behind the scenes. Yeah. You, you do the legwork. Okay. But if you want to keep subscribers and what actually I love your idea of doing it like bi-monthly or quarterly. Yeah. Because if you want to extend and keep people around for the subscription, I mean, that's the holy grail of subscription. Sure. Is keeping that one customer tapped in. Yes. And if if they're getting flooded and they just cancel after two months because it's already too much product, you've lost them for forever. Correct. I think too, like with it, yeah. with holidays, I think of this like Badger Box. Like if you could gift a, you know, a quarterly subscription to somebody, like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna gonna send a gift to somebody that's gonna cost me. Thirty to forty dollars every month. Okay. But if it was like a four boxes, I might send that. Like, I mean, it's similar to like gotcha. a Harry and David or something okay. like that. I might gift it to a family member out of state, okay. and they get four boxes throughout the year. And so, just that one-time gift. I wouldn't box. even gift it to people out of state. I think people in Wisconsin would yeah, like to get this as gifts too. Yeah. You've got people who are like, hey, here you go. This is the the best of Wisconsin for you because you love Wisconsin so much. Yeah. One market I was going to sure. add um, is college students. I think that a lot of parents want to send their kids care packages, whether they're at a Wisconsin yeah. college or a Wisconsin student or person who's studying somewhere else. Yeah, for sure. Um, those aren't people who are going to see your product in the bar unless they have a you know a legal ID necessarily. Sure. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's a different market. But I think that parents are looking at ways to show their kids that they care, yeah. and they're trying to send them a little piece of home. Mm -hmm. And I think it could be a really powerful market. It could be a recurring one because. Um, honestly, it makes parents' lives easier. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I know that Taylor Barrington, at when, she was at 100 State, but I think she's relocating, is having a lot of success with a product, a subscription box called University, okay. um, TEE. Okay. And um, it's that idea of parents or students themselves subscribing to receive like monthly care packages that huh. really fit a certain okay. niche. Um, very different. It's not Wisconsin specific. Sure. It's more like empowerment specific. Okay. But. Um, Anyway, I would I would look at that too as a market of people who really miss home and really want a piece yes. of home and have parents that might spend the money monthly. Okay. Yeah, you guys are opening up my eyes to a bunch of different markets that I th I thought about the care package for kids that are going off to college and that parents could send to them, but I mean it's it's setting up all those ads right to be able to target like those specific people right. and get that message across but it shouldn't be too hard once you're a few months in i mean yeah for sure. facebook makes it easy to target absolutely and um also just again reaching out to the bloggers and reaching out to yeah um i don't, I don't know parents i'm not a parent so parenting is not really my specific forte but there has to be those networks sure and talking to taylor um might be a good way to figure out how she's reached them okay yeah if you want to if you could maybe pass along that information sure. afterwards if you have a card i can make that happen that'd be cool thank you is there a page on your website about you and your connection to Wisconsin? I think um, that would be really great to have your bio. You know, I, I You're thought... obviously excited about the state, and it, yeah. I mean, if, you know, I trust a Wisconsinite's experience much more than my understanding of what Wisconsin is. Okay. Uh, and so if you really play that up of, you know, born and raised, or this is what I love about Wisconsin. Sure. I think that's a really good marketing. Okay. I think so too. And you might want to have somebody if it's not you write it, yeah. because gotcha. it's kind of hard to write about yourself. Yeah. Sometimes, and okay. so having somebody interview you and kind of tease okay. out the details sure. and then create a nice profile would be a good idea. Okay. So just probably add that to the about about yeah. us page. Is yes. okay. Yeah, like what your connection is. Yeah. What you love. Your story's about driving around to pick up the stuff. <laughs> no, that's, that's really so compelling. Good. Yeah. That adds to your brand is like yeah. this is a legit Wisconsin guy. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. do little videos about your road trips to farmers markets. For sure. I mean, yeah. I think that's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Spencer. Awesome. I think that's uh, all the time. I think if you can hang around, I'm sure other people might want to come up and sure. work a bit. Um, feel cool. free to get coffee. We always go back with too much coffee, and Crescendo is like, why didn't you drink this coffee? So I sit outside and I'm like, <laughs> um, but thank you again to Field 59, thank you to 100 State, um, and thank you to Spencer and Benchbox. Best yeah. of luck. Awesome.